1996, Will Smith went from being the Fresh Prince to kicking alien ass. And now, those same aliens are back to suck our core dry. Yeah, seriously, that's the plot. Now look at this picture of Jeff Goldblum. Hey there guys, how are you? So before I give you my review of Independence Day Resurgence, first I gotta call my brother, I gotta call my housekeeper, I gotta call my lawyer. Oh, forget my lawyer. <laughs> I had to get that shit out of the way. Alright, so the original Independence Day starring Will Smith, Jeff Goldblum, which came out in 1996, and it was one of those summer theater blockbuster events where you just shove popcorn into your mouth. It's like, sure, it's a big, stupid, dumb action movie, but when you have these charismatic characters giving these lines that only they could give with really cool special effects, well, it makes for an entertaining movie. Now, Independence Day Resurgence has a lot of returning characters like Jeff Goldblum, Bill Pullman, and Judd Hirsch, and also Brent Spiner. And obviously not returning for this sequel was Will Smith, and there's a few rumors floating around. One of them was he wanted his son to actually play his son in the movie. Uh, and the other rumor is he just wanted a shit ton of money and they're like, we can't afford that. And after watching Independence Day 2, I think this movie could have used Will Smith. I think they should have got out the checkbook, backed up a garbage truck full of cash, dumped it on his front lawn and said, okay, just be in the movie. We need you. Yeah, it's a piece of shit. It's a shitty script. It's underwhelming. It's mediocre. No one's going to remember it next week after it comes out. It's going to make no money. So we need you in this movie, Will Smith, to capitalize on the original. Can you come back? All of the returning cast members in this new film from the original that came out in the mid-1990s are the best thing about this sequel. They're the reason we get invested into this big, dumb action popcorn flick where the plot's paper thin, but it's masked by likable, charismatic characters. Now, for example, let's take Jeff Goldblum. If you took any other actor and put him in the role that Jeff Goldblum plays, it just wouldn't work out, it wouldn't be as enjoyable, and you just wouldn't be as entertained by it. Uh, 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 excuse me, uh, uh, you are going to have dinosaurs on your uh, 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 dinosaur tour? And the film also stars Liam Hemsworth because his brother Chris was too busy. And as far as his character goes in this film, he's sort of a generic space cowboy. He kind of just, I'm a slight badass. I get the job done whenever it needs to be done. But the thing about his, his character and, and the casting choice was... I think they went for the most generic, bland actor they could possibly get who's almost like a, a mannequin who can just stand in and just read the lines with no personality or charisma behind these lines. For example, like I'm talking about, the big theme of this is charisma. And these new actors in Independence Day Resurgence, they don't quite have that. And the movie also stars Jesse Usher, who plays the grown-up son of Will Smith's character in the original film. And as far as his character goes, I'm not quite sure why he was even in the movie. I mean, he has a subplot, but it's just like you don't care about what happens. He kind of just flies around in a jet the whole movie and doesn't really do much. For me, I thought it was sort of a missed opportunity. I thought he could have been a little bit more reminiscent to his father, gave some cool witty one-liners when he's fighting aliens. At least give me some of that corny shit. Now let's really dive into depth and talk more about the plot of this film because it's... Just, just listen to this real quick, all right? Are you ready? The aliens come back to seek vengeance and also suck the Earth's core dry. They want to suck the lava out of the core. So how do they do that? Well, they return with a 3,000 mile wide mother spaceship with the queen inside of it to do all this. And when you're watching this movie and you see a 3,000 mile wide spaceship sitting on top of the planet Earth, it's just, it's like, is that necessary? Like, is it truly necessary? Does it have to be that big? Like, maybe half the size or a quarter of the size, but does it need to be 3,000 fucking miles wide? Maybe if you didn't have a 3,000 mile wide spaceship, you wouldn't have to suck Earth's fucking core dry of molten lava. Maybe you could just, you know, use some solar power or some other alien technology. I don't know. So to sum it up, everything that happens in this movie is just overkill. It's not really entertaining. It's not visually stunning to look at because at times when you see the alien destruction, which in this movie lasts for about five minutes and it just feels like a blurry mess of CG, it almost looks like a video game cutscene. I guess the most impressive visual effect is a big wave that chases Judd Hirsch and his little boat. And speaking of Judd Hirsch and the returning cast members, they're the only reason this movie is bearable to watch at times. You don't care about any of the new cast members. I just wanted to see the old ones do things. I didn't care what it was. Here are my final flicking thoughts in Independence Day 2, Resurgence. There's a few glimmers of hope throughout this movie. There are a few moments where it's entertaining and fun to watch because I like to watch alien invasion films and the film does try to set up a sequel as best as it possibly can. And some of the ideas it poops out at you, the audience, 
I don't think they were all that creative and they were kind of lazy at best. Because the way that the movie ends, it ends with the possibility of us going out into space to kick some more alien ass. We can barely fight off these guys here on Earth. Why, why are we going there? Oh, we want to make more movies. Okay. And for me during this movie, I was hoping to get some more insight on the aliens who keep invading us, maybe learn a little bit more about their technology, their backstory. And the movie does give you a few glimmers, but really nothing substantial. So as far as this movie goes, it's a mess at best and it was very disappointing. And it really wasn't even all that fun and entertaining. It almost gets, well, boring at times. You just don't even want to continue watching it at some points because it's too big, too bloated, and too long for its own good without any substantial substance or charismatic characters throughout the movie to keep tying all this stupid shit together. So I'm going to give Independence Day 2 uh, a D plus. Yeah. All right, so that's my take on Independence Day 2. Now here's my question to you and let me know down below. What do you guys think about this movie? Or what is your favorite movie relating to aliens? So leave your thoughts, your opinions down below and look out for my Tarzan movie review. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe. That way I can see you next time.